When I became an atheist, it was a gradual process. As any major change in the way you think or your way of life should be. But to start, I was religious from a relatively young age. I was initially raised Catholic, but eventually I figured that following what the Bible says would be more reasonable. So after I figured that, for about three or four years, I spent as much time as I could reading the Bible and believing what I read, starting in the New Testament. But eventually, I started to have my doubts, and initially these doubts were really small, like, what if there is no God and I'm just wasting my time? Which I easily brushed off, because I thought, of course God exists, of course. But eventually, I had more and more serious doubts. There were a few issues that made me seriously consider the legitimacy of religion. I can't remember them all at the moment, but one of the points was why I believe in God. And I didn't really have a good answer to that. I was just taught that God, heaven, and hell existed from a young age. And then I started to think about why everyone else became religious. And it was pretty much the same thing. Though I saw that people also became religious because they had some sort of emotional experience at church or something along those lines. Those were the only two reasons that I could come up with. But what really intrigued me was that those things don't necessarily indicate that religion is true. You could get people to follow just about any idea with those methods, but that alone didn't deconvert me. There was also another train of thought. I began to think about children in Africa or Asia or something along those lines who died never knowing anything about Christianity or Jesus. And I began to seriously wonder whether they could possibly go to heaven. Because I didn't buy into the idea that everybody's heard about Jesus. Which I've heard some people say. But that kind of reminded me of a verse in the Bible which, now that I think about it, was probably cherry-picked, but it doesn't really matter anymore. The verse said something along the lines of, God tries the hearts. And to me, that meant that if anybody died not knowing about Jesus, then they could still go to heaven if they had a godly heart, if they acted in a godly way. And that made sense to me. But then I started thinking about what about the people that have heard about Jesus, have heard about Christianity, but don't believe it. If they too have a godly heart, could they not go to heaven also? But that still didn't deconvert me. But what really pushed me over the edge as to seriously doubt whether or not God existed was something that my teacher said in psychology class. We were learning about reinforcement schedules, and I'll try not to go too deep into what exactly this means, but basically the idea is that if a behavior is reinforced randomly, not necessarily with any correlation, then that could cause a perceived correlation and thereby cause superstitious behavior. He then started to say something but stopped himself and said he wasn't going to say it. And a lot of people, including myself, were really curious as to what he was going to say. He said he was going to offend people, but everyone still wanted to know. He then asked us to raise our hands if we wanted to be offended. and. I was one of the people who raised their hands, which, now that I think about it, he was probably just looking for my hand. But once we convinced him to tell us what he was going to say, he said that prayer was a result of accidental reinforcement. Basically, that means that prayer is a superstitious behavior that doesn't actually have any efficacy. Prayer doesn't work. And I am really interested in psychology, especially at the time, and that made total sense to me. And all of these things together, along with maybe some other things that I'm forgetting, that really made me wonder if God exists. So I decided to have an experiment of sorts. I figured that when God answers prayers, he answers it in a mysterious way. So I thought that I would 
pray for proof that God existed that was possible for him to do in these mysterious ways, I prayed and asked God to put a piece of paper on my bed just to show that he existed. Because I figured that this was really simple. This was possible to happen without divine intervention. So this could easily fall into this mysterious way that God answers prayers. And then later that day, there was no paper on my bed. And I did similar things a couple times just to make sure and with the same result. So I thought one of two things could explain this. Either God doesn't exist and I'm wasting my time learning about him, or he does exist and he's allowing me to disbelieve. But at that moment, I didn't turn into a full-blown atheist. I identified as an agnostic, which really just means that I didn't know what the term atheist meant at the time, but I still wanted to know for sure. So I did what anyone would do and I looked it up on the internet. I looked up proof that God existed and what I found was really underwhelming. I understood very well where they were coming from. After all, these were all things that I had heard throughout my life, but didn't really think much about. But I didn't necessarily understand how they connected to the existence of God. Basically, I was just really confused, which I now understand that that's pretty much how proof of God works. It's just really confusing. So since the evidence that God existed really wasn't satisfying, I decided to look up evidence that God didn't exist, counter arguments for the existence of God. And that led me to all of these YouTube atheists. But what really struck me was that the things that the atheists were saying made a hell of a lot more sense than what they were arguing against. And somewhere along this line, I figured out what exactly it meant to be an atheist. I learned that it's not saying that you believe that God doesn't exist, but that you don't believe that God exists. It's a lack of belief in God. So I kept watching these videos because I found them genuinely interesting. And eventually I was convinced that I was indeed an atheist. But as I kept watching these videos and reading up on the subject, I began to have objections of my own to religious arguments and eventually got to the point where I couldn't watch a video with such arguments without pausing it and voicing my own opinions. And when that started happening, I figured I could have my own YouTube channel because I thought it was really interesting. I really enjoyed the conversation, but I didn't really have a camera, but I did have a photocopier. So I figured I'd start using whatever I had. So more than a year later, I'm still doing it. And that's where I am today. And to be honest, I'm not really sure what the point of this video was.